As I evolved into my filmmaking career, I started investing more and more into primes. 24, 85, until one day I discovered the 24 to 70. The zoom lens became my daily lens that I would pretty much never remove from my camera, until a few months ago, when I started diving more and more into my passion for a more filmic look. And that's when I discovered that if I would use very unique glass, I would get a very unique look and feel and differentiate my filmmaking from what everyone else is doing. I slowly built my lens arsenal, which would never leave my camera back. And as of the time of making this video, I have only been shooting both for myself and clients using only prime lenses, all manual, some vintage. On this channel, I've spoken a lot about gear and lenses, and I've never actually made a video about why do I specifically shoot with the lenses that I shoot with. So I thought to myself, if I do find this interesting, probably some of you find this too. So here we are. Why do I only shoot video with prime lenses? We're gonna cover a few pros and cons about shooting only with prime lenses, but please do take this with a grain of salt because this is very subjective. This is the style of filmmaking that I love. It doesn't mean that you have to do that too. So just, you know, take an idea, try yourself and see how you go. Let's start right from the beginning. What kind of lenses do I pick? To shoot on. So I have nowhere close to a good arsenal of focal lengths to cover everything that I need. So for now I just make it work. In my camera bag 99% of the time I have the 35mm from Nisi which is a beautiful lens and it's pretty much 90% of the time on my camera. I have the 45mm from Irix which is the beautiful smooth lens. At 45 it's a bit tighter than 35 and it gets this beautiful shallow adapter feel because of T1.5. Then I have a 58mm from Helios. This Helios 44-2 it's my favorite lens by far because of the look and because it just distinguish the footage from anything else. So these are the three lenses that live in my camera bag. I also have a 28 millimeter from Canon. It's a Canon FD, F2.8. And I have a Samyang 14 millimeter T2.8, I believe. But I barely use this one because I'm not a fan of wide angles. The 28 sometimes I use, but it's mostly just the 35. So with this said, you're probably already kind of understanding where I'm going with this. I have five different lenses, some vintage, some not, but they're all different manufacturers. And when shooting with prime lenses, especially with cine lenses and vintage lenses, this is kind of a problem because all of these lenses are made with a different glass, a different coating to have a specific look. So you're kind of meant to have a whole set and just shoot with the set. But when mixing lenses and manufacturers, this becomes a bit of a problem, especially in post-production, because a shot with Helios compared to a Irix or an Easy, the way they represent colors and skin tones is totally different. So I think I kind of got it down to a point where I'm pretty comfortable with shooting with all of the lenses that I own and match the color in post-production pretty well. But if you're just starting out and you have two or three different lenses, it is kind of hard to match a Helios to uh, you know, a modern lens to a Canon FD lens. So you have to be careful and you have to know exactly how to match these colors. Otherwise, you're kind of screwed when it comes to post-production. I mentioned the look and this is probably the only reason why I picked to shoot only with prime Cine and vintage lenses. Look, I'm not saying that this is the right way to shoot or the wrong way to shoot, but if you shoot with, let's say a Sigma 2470 that I shot with for the past one or two years, kind of anyone can get the same lens, the same camera and recreate that image. But if you shoot with a Helios and an Irix and an EC and a Canon FD, these lenses have specific coating and glass, as I said before, which means they recreate a different look. And it's kind of funny because on my Instagram, the question that I get asked the most is, how do you reach this look? What are you shooting on? What's your gear? What's your lens? What's this? What's that? So, so many people kind of recognize the fact that the videos that I'm sharing on Instagram are very different to so many others. And this is exactly why movies like June 2, which is 
the best looking movie I've seen in a long time, probably since the Batman and Joker. This is the reason why this film decided to shoot all of the movie with iron glass rehabs vintage lenses to get this specific beautiful creamy imperfect look. Another factor to keep in mind when shooting with prime lenses is that they are usually a lot faster than a zoom lens. A zoom lens usually gets down to 2.8 if it's a very good one or you know 3.2 or 4 while most prime lenses are you know f 2.8 or below. I have a lot of f2, I have a lot of t 1.9 like this one. I'm shooting a t 1.9, look how blurry right now the background is. And the Irix is t 1.5 which is the shallowest lens I've ever used and it's so hard to pull focus but when you get something in focus at t 1.5 everything else just looks so creamy and just so much different again we're going back to the look we're going back to the way things look when you're shooting through these lenses and shooting through these lenses especially with the irix and the helios that i own you get this beautiful bokeh look the helios i don't know if i even have to talk about it but it's this beautiful anamorphic looking like swirly almost vertical bokeh which is just something unique and the irix is perfectly imperfect i like to call it it is a little bit of a distorted bokeh look and then the further you go from the center of the frame it gets a bit of a this beautiful oval shape which i think just looks very very unique and having these kind of prime lenses that are so fast and so shallow are perfect for video especially in low light because it can keep your ISO down and you can shoot wide open and get all of that light and without sacrificing the image quality. The last absolute game changer and I swear this is the last one of the pros then I'm gonna move on to the cons but the last game changer for me it's the fact that you can't just like sit still and zoom in zoom out and you know get different shots you have to move you have to actually get closer to the action you have to focus on composition you you can't just like whoop whoop you know zoom in and out it's just not something you can do which to me it's a huge advantage unless you're shooting wildlife or sport then you probably need to zoom but if you're shooting anything else and especially for what i like which is this kind of culture cinematic documentary style this style of filmmaking just makes me so much more excited than just having a zoom and being able to zoom in and out. Now, let's move into the cons. The cons, well, I think the biggest cons is price. When it comes down to prime lenses, you know, if you think about it, a 24 to 70, you can probably shoot everything with a 24 to 70. But with prime lenses, you probably need a 24, a 35, a 50, and like a 75. So instead of spending a thousand bucks on one lens, you probably have to spend four, five, six, seven thousand dollars, depends what lens you pick, to cover the same focal range. So, you know, I don't recommend anyone just, you know, buying four lenses to cover all of this. And I don't own yet <laughs> four lenses, but you can have something similar, like I have a 28, I have a 35, I have a 45, and I have a 60 which for now covers everything that I need to be covered. I haven't, you know, I have an 85, but I barely use it because it's super heavy and it's not really the look that I'm going for. So yeah, I think you just need a few lenses and just work with what you have. Again, it's a prime lens. You can just move close to the subject if you want a close up. You can move away from the subject if you need a wider shot. Sometimes I get even wides with my Helios 60 millimeters. I just move super far away from the subject to get this nice compressed wide shot, but with a specific look. And then I move close to the subject and I'm still a 60 millimeter, but I get a close up shot. And when using those two shots together, it still looks like a wide medium close up, which is what I recommend to shoot all the time anyway. So definitely, it's a con that you have to spend more money, but it's a pro because you get to focus more on composition and moving yourself and creating more 
interesting frames. So should everybody do like me? Absolutely not. This is again, my style. This is what I like to shoot with. And I don't actually recommend anyone doing this because it's so, it gets in the way a lot. And I see that a lot of the time, I'm like, I wish I could just zoom in. But then I remind myself and I'm like, no, wait, maybe this will look better because this, 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 let me change the lens, let me do that, let me do that. So again, I'm not saying that what I'm saying is right. I'm not saying what I'm saying is wrong. But I do believe that at least if you get into filmmaking, you should have prime lenses, mostly because they're fast, they're shallow. And I am a huge advocate for filmmaking and vintage lenses because of the look, because of the softness that you get out of it. So again, take this with a grain of salt. And if you like this video, you found this interesting, leave a like and subscribe and help the channel grow. Until next time, thanks so much for sticking around. Have a great day. Bye.